Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming to this lecture on Bonn. I will show you now in, in two parts, in the two-part lecture, uh, a lot of information. I give you a lot of information about cortical bone and about the bone in general. And uh, later on, after this, we will have the chance to attract a few questions. So the following lecture is about bone, and the lecture is intended to be uh, seen by dental implantologists because I feel that implantologists do not know the basics of bone. We all have learned about bone, of course, in our university times, but we have learned it from the point of view of an anatomist or of a physiologist, but we have not heard information about bone um, from implantologists. So this lecture gives you a lot of information and I hope that you will learn from it a lot because as soon as you know about bone, as soon as you know what bone is doing at the very moment when uh, the implant is inserted or at the very moment when the implant is in function, then you will have no problem to understand what the bone is doing at the moment. So implantologists must know everything about bone just as carpenters know everything about wood. Now, we have all learned that osteoclasts, osteoblasts and osteocytes are part of the bone. They are embedded in bone, they are creating bone and they are resorbing bone. Uh, this is knowledge which we have received uh, in our student times and now I will show you how you will apply this knowledge for dental implantology. Now, osteoclasts are very important cells because they are resorbing bone. The resorption of the bone comes before the formation of the bone in the normal case. So we need osteoclasts to get enough resorption. We need osteoclasts in order to renew the bone and to uh, allow a good perfusion through the bone. So the purpose of osteoclasts is resorbing bone. Osteoclasts, however, do not uh, work on their own. They work in little uh, work units together with osteoblasts and osteocytes those cells which are forming the bone and regulating the bone. Now osteoblasts stem from the bloodstream, so they don't come directly out of the bone, they come from the bloodstream. The purpose of the osteoblasts is to build up bone matrix and they then develop further to osteocytes. Now it's important to understand that osteoblasts always stem from the bloodstream, while osteoclasts, the bone resorbing cell, cells are stemming uh, from the bone itself. It is important to understand this because we are doing bone augmentations, we are transplanting bone and we are assuming while we are doing this that we are transplanting live osteoblasts and that those osteoblasts which we are transplanting are going to produce new bone or they are going to stay at least. This is not true. Osteoblasts which have been transplanted with the bone do usually not survive this procedure. So new osteoblasts have to come into the scene. They have to be uh, brought by the blood vessels and they have to develop them inside the bone. And only those new osteoblasts will uh, create new bone. Osteocytes are aged version of osteoblasts, so while uh, bone is developing and while bone is aging, uh, osteoblasts get buried in the matrix and these osteocytes um, have almost no uh, metabolic activity um, because they are buried, they have no contact to the bone, but they have a lot of uh, other purposes. They are in contact through dendrites with other osteocytes, osteoblasts and even cells of other osteons. When we talk about bone, we have to understand that there are different types of bone. Uh, as implantologists, we usually know the D1, D2, D3, D4 bone, but in fact, this classification is not very helpful. It's not helpful because it doesn't describe the types of bone we are working with, it only describes the mineralization, the degree of the mineralization of the bone, and this, in fact, is not a very valuable information. So the first bone I want to mention here is the woven bone. Woven bone develops usually in fracture sites. Woven bone also develops in extraction sites. But woven bone is not a stable version of the bone. Woven bone develops, it matures, and it's resorbed. It is